So welcome everybody here. Today I have the pleasure to be speaking to you with my beautiful colleague about the growing power of Instagram and TikTok on behalf of our beautiful company Relevance Yachts. And uh, without further ado, I would just like to ask you a few questions. First of all, um, just raise your hand if you have a personal Instagram account. Almost everyone, except for Camilla. <laughs> yeah. What about TikTok? Oh, <laughs> two. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to get hooked. <laughs> and which one of you is uh, running a business account, either for Instagram or TikTok? One, two, three, four, five. Almost everybody again. So yeah, and next off, we have a question related to yachting. Do you have any idea of what this, sorry, <laughs> on the wrong computer. Do you have any idea of what this here is? Any wild guesses? I mean, obviously it's a yacht and it's a picture of a yacht, but what could it be more specifically? Any guesses? We're going to reveal you the answer in five seconds. Like it's a hotel, I don't know. Someone's <laughs> staying. <laughs> it's a yacht. Okay, can you ask the PM? Repeat the big question again. What exactly could this be? I mean, it's a yacht, but which yacht is it? Um, maybe it could be an experience, right? Not only something product, something physical, but it's more than that. It exactly. Goes beyond, it goes beyond the idea of yacht, the idea of something that you can touch. Or something that you, you feel yes, so here we heard that it could be something more than just a, um, a ship. It's something, it's the idea of it. And actually we are quite uh, correct with that because this here is actually an NFT. It means a non-fungible token. And this here is a virtual yacht that will be a real yacht in two years. And now somebody has bought this this year in March, this yacht, the idea of this yacht for 12 million US dollars. And this has been done through the social media. So to link it to our presentation today, it's very relevant to have yachts um, and Instagram because it's now nowadays that we can actually sell yachts. We can sell charters, we can sell yachts through Instagram and through TikTok and not just uh, the physical yachts, but the idea of a yacht, the provision of a yacht. And not only through the official website of the company, of course, and through your broker, but through the social media platforms. And how does that connect to the NFT side, the financial side? So exactly, the NFT is, of course, non-fungible token, so this payment was done through cryptocurrency. So it's uh, all virtual, it's done with the blockchain technology. But the main idea is that actually this yacht was sold through social media. Yes, so, so that the connection with how to actually, the sale was done is not of interest. That's not of interest. Yes, yeah. exactly. like the point is that it was sold through social media platforms, yes. 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 Oh, just a question, when you say about they bought the idea of the yacht, mm -hmm. what do you mean? I just mean that they, the yacht doesn't exist, but Yet. they have the right to use it as soon as it will be finished in two years. So they bought the yachts in a way? In a way, in exactly. That's so essentially what, that what it is. For example, like, Portugal stops the price and then the M1 is... Uh, in two years, three years. They gave everything in advance? Yes. And they got a picture of the yacht? Yes. Picture and a digital model of the yacht. So this is the future. Welcome. <laughs> it's no worries. Moving on, we just started, so you're well in time. Okay. Today, we're going to cover the evolution of TikTok and Instagram. We're going to go through its numbers, and we're going to tell you the main differences between both of the social media platforms. We're going to show you and give you examples how to run a successful influencer marketing campaign. And my colleague, Kiri, he's going to explain a little bit more about the concept of video and why it's important for social media. So, my name is Romina Radeva. I'm 24 years old and I work in the social media department here at Relevance. Um, 
actually the services that we're providing for social media include content creation, the creation of content calendars, community building, community management, scheduling, etc. This is my colleague Kiri and he's actually our video specialist in the company. Exactly, so more specifically I shoot video and I shoot pictures in-house but I also use the content that someone else has shot that someone is providing to me. I use stock content and then I just create videos and as we will hear soon in 25-30 minutes videos nowadays, TikTok, Reels, they are really booming so this is why it's essential for a marketing agency I hope to have a video specialist and uh, Romina how many um, accounts are you running at the moment? Whoa, actually that's a tricky question. Right now at the moment I'm handling eight social media accounts but through, throughout the years I'll probably 20 of them or something like this and uh, during the years I created so many content calendars. I'm not sure if you're familiar what is actually a content calendar. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. No? Like if you create content in advance and then you... Yes, so, yeah, so how we are actually working here, we are, depends on the contract of the client, of course. We are creating a social media post in advance. We are sourcing the images. It can be also like either an image, like a picture, carousel post, a video, a reel. And then we're creating the concept, we're giving you the hashtags, and then we're sending you this content calendar for the next month for approval. And once you approve the content calendar with all of the posts for the month, then we start with proceed with the scheduling procedure. Oh, that's a very good question. So we were asked if, uh, if images need to be original. Actually, um, on social media, you normally can repurpose uh, pictures and videos from other people as long as you ask them and you tag them that you give the credit to the original account and the original photographer. Yeah, we're going to cover this um, area a little bit later in the presentation. So, yes. So, let's talk about the evolution of TikTok and Instagram. As probably everyone here knows, Instagram was created in 2010. And the concept behind the application was to be a photo and video sharing platform. But throughout the years, um, first Facebook, AK Meta, they bought Instagram and then they introduced the, the stories concept, the full face filter, the reels concept and actually recently they launched a template for reels and in this way by the use of this template you can create your video for less than five minutes so yes and um, actually about TikTok is a little bit different TikTok started in 2016 and it was created by a Chinese tech he created the app in China uh, under the name Douyin but in the beginning, it was available only in China. People here in Europe, they were not aware of the existence of this application. But in 2018, he released the global version of the application and he called it TikTok. It's a very interesting fact that most of the people think that TikTok is actually banned in China, even though it's created by Chinese. But that's not the case. Actually, TikTok is still running in China, but under the name of Douyin. It's not the name TikTok. TikTok is only uh, for the European countries and basically everywhere else but China. Um, and uh, actually, TikTok exploded during COVID because people were staying at home, they had nothing to do, so they started creating videos, sharing videos, posting them. And that's um, actually the most downloaded application for 2020. Moving on. Instagram, COVID, TikTok because they created reels. They created the reels, actually. So there is actually a background story here. First, like Snapchat, I'm sure that you're familiar with this uh, social media platform. Snapchat started and um, it started booming. A lot of people started using Snapchat. So Instagram, they were like a little bit worried, okay, what we're gonna do now? So they tried to buy TikTok, but it was unsuccessful um, attempt for $3 billion and it was unsuccessful, <laughs> yes. And then Mark decided that he's gonna 
transfer, uh, not transfer, but uh, create Instagram as a potential killer of Snapchat. And that's when actually he introduced the stories concept in Instagram. Same thing actually for TikTok. That's uh, after TikTok exploded, then the Reels concept in Instagram was intro introduced. So he's kind of taking everything from everywhere and he's putting it in the same platform. And this is why Instagram is that successful and that powerful platform today. So let's talk about TikTok and Instagram in numbers. We did a research and we found out that in Instagram, there are more female, a little bit uh, more female users than actually female users. And the biggest age groups are uh, between 18 and 20 years old and 24, 25 and 34 years old. For um, TikTok, however, it's a little bit different. The female users are more than the male users. And again, the, age, the biggest age groups that are using actually this application is again between 18 and 24 years and between 25 and 34 years old, which means for your business that by the use of these social media platforms, you're targeting the next generation or the kids, the children of the ultra high net worth individuals. And uh, next up. Uh... I have a question for you. Do you know what is the average age of a yacht buyer? Any guesses? Wild guesses. 35. 35. We have 35 here. I'm going to say 45. 45. Any other guesses? I would have said way older. Way older? 50. Yeah. 50. Yeah, like what do we have there? 48. 48. 48. <laughs> <laughs> 47 and a half. 42. 42 and 42. in the corner. 62 here. 67. 67. Wow. <laughs> you ready for the answer? It's coming Actually, in 3, 2, 1. 48. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's round in. <laughs> yes. So moving on. I just want to ask you, because I heard that uh, you are actually running um, Instagram and social media accounts for uh, your businesses, do you have any tips that you would like to share with us, like what are your be best tactics that you're using while running these uh, social media platforms of yours? What is your secret of social media? Your best <laughs> tips. Uh, no, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, solution. So I do all the content in that we skipped seven weeks before, all the visual, all the text, adapting for Instagram, for LinkedIn, with like the format, which wow. is the same. Then I've done everything, and I wake up in the morning, every Tuesday morning, and there is something popping up at 9 a.m. That's <laughs> amazing. Uh, Not my professional level. Swallow. Yes, Yes, my Swello, S-W-E-L-L-O, but I guess there are others existing. Yes. 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 You should have intern software or if you're using another one. Yeah, I'm gonna let you know in a bit. Yeah, <laughs> of course, no problem. Actually, one more question out of interest. How many uh, posts do you usually then schedule for a week? So usually I just only once a week, Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Since uh, beginning of August, as the monocle was coming and I have a son there, I put twice a week, um, Tuesday mornings, yet, and Thursday morning. Um, and I don't want to do more. And the audience was better with one per week than two per week. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. an interesting yeah. research, actually. Yes. 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 Yeah. But I've heard that before. I have one friend who's running an Instagram, and she said, we're always getting followers. We can follow and follow. And every time we post, we, lead, like, we lose followers because people are reminded that we really bought them. <laughs> interesting. So I that's a very interesting observation. Just to yeah. recap also for the live audience, in case you didn't hear, so we have uh, here one member of the audience who has been using this uh, scheduling platform called Swello, and that's uh, their best uh, strategy, best tip. And then we had a discussion about the fact that sometimes when you post, actually you would lose followers. 
Yeah. We go on. So these are our top advices for you how to grow your social media audience. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the community management and the community building is very important for your account. You have to engage with your followers. You need to answer to messages. You need to answer to your comments under the pictures. You need to like the post of your followers. And also another very important thing, you can even go to your competitors page to research what actually they are doing, what kind of audience are they interested in and who is interested actually in them to see what kind of post they're doing to, in order like, to be able to uh, build your strategy in, um, in a better way. Another thing is to optimize your hashtags well because something that people do all the time is just to put random hashtags under their post because they just want to put hashtags. But actually the hashtag strategy doesn't really work like this. You need to adapt your hashtags to the post. You need to basically use the hashtags that are um, response, responsive to the post that you're posting and to the industry that you're working in. In this case, like for example, if you work in yachting, if you're a brokerage, you're gonna uh, do a hashtag uh, yacht broker, sales broker, um, charter broker. But like if you're working for a shipyard, like you're gonna use the hashtags for the shipyard. So you really have to adapt your hashtags to, to be relevant to your profile, not, not just to use like the generic hashtags, just to use hashtags, for example, love, smile, sunny day, because these hashtags, they are not relevant to your post and they're not gonna bring you anything. Another thing is uh, to post extra value content because in this way, your audience is gonna be even more engaged. This means extra value content. Probably you don't know what it means, but I'm gonna explain now. So um, you don't have to post only uh, to promote your services and your products, but you need to also post uh, about um, collaborations that are happening, events that are happening, um, news in your company. This is something that your followers, they're actually interested in and they Helpful want to tips. learn more. Yeah, they want to learn more about your company, the inside part of your company to get familiar and to feel closer to you. You have to also kind of um, research what they're interested in. You can even do a questionnaire like or a pool to see what they want to see in your social media. And in this way, when you start posting this kind of post more recent, you're gonna exceed their expectations. Um, another thing very important is to optimize your bios and your profiles. This means that your bio has to represent your company, uh, the locations, the, your services, and don't forget that you can include a link that it will um, uh, to, to, to your website. So basically you can include a link to, the, your, to your website or like to a blog post or to something that you would like to share with your audience and they're gonna have direct access to that. Of course. Um, when you have links to something, I remember years ago in Facebook, if you didn't link to something, you, had to, you couldn't do it directly in the post feed. But this, I'm going back about five, six years back. Yeah, so how did it work? So how does it work? So actually, it's still not possible to post a link under your feed post, but you can do, you can post, uh, you can put the link in your bio and then in your feed post you can say link in bio. In this way people when they read your post, your caption of, under the post, they're gonna um, go to your bio and they're gonna find the, the relevant link. Also recently in stories they uh, introduced the link uh, concept as well. So now you can post a story, you can put a link to the page that you would like to share and in this way when people are actually looking at your story, they can click on your link and they're gonna go directly to the website that you want to share with them. Um, so moving on, um, it's very important the work with influencers. If you manage to create a successful influencer campaign, you're not gonna increase only the number of your followers, but also you're gonna increase the hopefully your sales. My colleague will explain a little bit um, more later about the influencer campaign, how to manage that, how to create that, how to choose the best influencer for your brand, which uh, 
uh, is the best uh, strategy for them because, as you know, like there's micro and macro influencers and mega influencers. This depends on the number of the following. So here you can scan um, this QR code and you are going to get access to our blog post which actually can give you extra information about what exactly we are doing and how we are managing and running successful social media accounts here at Relevance. Feel free to just take a picture and then if it doesn't now work, as long as you have the picture, it will die. you can later on go there. Plus, also, we will send you the slides show afterwards and you have the link over here. So in case you now miss it, no worries. We're done, we're good. So let's talk now ab about the big differences between TikTok and Instagram. Let's start with Instagram. So if you want to grow your audience in Instagram, you need to focus on your hashtags, as I already mentioned. You need to tag the locations, you need to tag people, accounts, and to be very active. And we recommend to post at least one reel per week. We recommend to post two to three times per week for your businesses. And we also uh, recommend to post stories all the time to create highlights because in this way people, if they actually find your profile a little bit later uh, by the use of highlights, they're going to be able to see what exactly you were doing, what kind of destinations that you have been, what kind of services you provide. And to know a little bit more about the company, it's good also to create a, a team highlights, like to introduce... Uh, the, the faces of the people working there, because in this way, like the posts are gonna be a little bit more personalized, which usually the users, they would like to see that, to engage a little bit more with uh, the accounts that they are following. In TikTok, however, the things uh, work in a slightly different way. In TikTok, it's very important to follow the trends. And what do, you, do I mean by that? So following the trends means to use trending sounds, to, um, uh, recreate the trending videos because this is the most important thing. Romina, also, actually I have a question for you. How would you, as now someone who is listening, uh, search for current trends on TikTok? Like what, would you, what do you do in order to identify like what's trending at the moment? Well, actually there is a hashtag trending sounds <laughs> which you can use for that also trends and like usually people when they're introducing a new trend that's what they're doing because this they want this video to go viral and in this way usually first it starts with a trending sound or in the beginning as i mentioned during covid it was like with some de like dancing moves which uh honestly if your business has nothing to do with that i don't recommend because you're gonna lose your audience so you really have to follow the structure of your business and not to forget about your brand identity trending sounds means uh, the music which is the uh, on the background of your video that you're posting so the music that you're using for your video and then trending sounds are the are the sounds that actually are most popular right now so if you want to get viral if you this can happen by the use of a trending sound. Right, a particular type of yeah, yes. exactly. So actually when you go either on Instagram or on TikTok and you open the, the feed, you start looking, you soon notice that actually like many of the videos they use the exact same sound and it's something that is currently just like trending there. And actually it's this sort of a tip that when you use that sound, for a video that you create, you have at least higher chances of your video like blowing up and showing to more people. So actually when you open your Instagram, for example, and you just start like scrolling on the reels, then like you, in every video you see the sound that it has. Yeah, yeah, it and says you can it. Reuse it after yeah, that. exactly. And then you can actually click on that uh, like sound title to save it for yourself. So it's, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm sure they can show you afterwards. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Um, also, um, it's very important to be very active in TikTok, especially if it's a new account. You need to post as much as you can, especially like the first few months of, after the creation of the account. You need to post at least once per day because in this way you're going to boost your account and you're going to be able to 
uh, attract more people and by the use of the right hashtags and by the use of the, I don't know, re relevant videos to your brand, you can become very popular in TikTok for a very, very, very like less time. So um, another thing that recently actually we found out is the length of the video. This is very important because people think that it's about the content that you're creating. But recently, some of the biggest TikTokers, they started releasing videos in which they're saying that now five seconds to 10 seconds video are the videos exploding. So it, and it's not only about the content that you're giving in TikTok, it's also about the use of the training sound. It can be just five seconds, but if it's popular, this can help you to grow your audience. So do it. Um, and it's actually funny. Now, we are going to talk about video later more but for example me i could spend easily 10 hours 16 hours editing this super complicated video that is highly detailed animations that lasts about one minute to one and a half minutes and then in the end you see that the reach it gets it's 100 views and then you do something in let's say 20 minutes that lasts five to ten seconds and then you have thousands of views so and it's likes. not always in life that the efforts you put is equal to the outcome that you get good question why do you think that is why do you think uh, that a longer video gets less views than a shorter video well in my opinion personally um i think because people you have to catch the attention of the people in the beginning, like the first few seconds of the video, because if you lose them in the beginning, nobody will stay until the end of the video. And TikTok in particular, they're analyzing the time that you're spending looking, watching the particular video. And in this way, if your video is uh, actually liked by other people, then TikTok is gonna push it even more. But if you don't get them at the beginning, they're not gonna stay until the end of the video, they're not gonna like it, they're not gonna see it again, they're not gonna engage with your account. So if you are creating a longer video, the first few seconds of the videos is the most important thing. Um, he is gonna, my colleague is gonna cover a little bit more about that when he explains about the video. The, the video and I have one quick cool. comment. Yes. Uh, just super quick and then we move on. I, th I still think that videos that are longer and that don't get that much engagement, they are still important because there will be, of course, fewer people than seeing them. But it might be just a few that see this one minute, one and a half minute that is super high, high quality and very nice. And then these people are going to spread the word about the company or turn into possible uh, buyers of your service or product. So it's not to say that you should only go for the videos that really like blow you up. Yeah, they are, of course, important in growing your account. But equally, you should have the qu high quality stuff in order to have the high quality feel for your brand. And forget, uh, don't forget, don't use your brand identity in order to follow trends. Because in this way, you're not going to go anywhere with your company. You're going to lose your image. You're going to lose your brand identity which, identity, which is not good for your company. So another thing, talking about hashtags. In Instagram, you can use up to 30 hashtags in a feed post and up to 10 hashtags on a story. In TikTok, however, you have a limited amount of characters. You have 150 characters, including the hashtags, which means that um, you have to focus on the very relevant hashtags. In Instagram, you can talk about your company, you can like post about uh, your company, like about even like the names of the products or like the services that you're providing. But in TikTok, you have to be very specific and not, don't, not, don't forget to use the TikTok related hashtags, which are for you page, for you, etc., etc. Um, and here is actually a very interesting thing I'm going to share with you. Um, Instagram recently, they changed uh, their algorithm for hashtags. If you use the same hashtags under two, uh, two, under two posts in a row, Instagram is not going to push your post. This means that your post is not going to appear under the hashtag uh, category section. Yeah. A section. This means that you have two solutions for your businesses. You either have to change the hashtags after two, three posts, 
or you, ha you can delete the hashtags from the previous post and to paste them on the new post because in this way you're going to appear again in the hashtag category and your post is going to be pushed. People who are following the hashtag, they're going to be able to find your post under the hashtag category and also they're going to be able to find your post if they research this particular hashtag. If you post, for example, today, and if you're posting every day, on on Monday you post a post with these hashtags, you need to post three more posts and then you can reuse the hashtags without even deleting them. But if you want to use them for all of your posts, you have to delete them and putting them again because they're not going to be pushed. So you cannot use the same hashtags for two, three posts in a row. Right. So then yes. you will have posts without hashtags. No, no, no. You're, you're yeah, and the previous so, ones, yeah, yes. Ones, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's in the, the past. past. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. yes. Well, you're going to appear only under the category of the ones that you changed. So, yes and no. So, is it like, my, today I press Monaco, right? Yes. Monaco is at, at what, where we are right now, and it's the Monaco Young Show. Yes. And then tomorrow I post Monaco again. Yeah. Are you telling me that the second post won't be... No, the second post it will be, but the third one it won't be. And also, to importantly note, you, you still appear, of course, for your followers. It's, it's more about the new followers that you would reach, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and last but not least, so when you open your Instagram account, the landing page is to your favorite people. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but recently Instagram introduced a new feature. You can put in your favorites the people that you would like to appear first on your feed and on your story category. So, um, however, in TikTok, when you open your application, you are landing on the For You page. This means that in TikTok, uh, you have a higher chance to uh, be um, recognized, to be found, and you can discover and explore easier because in Instagram you have to go to the explore category to start uh, searching for something while in TikTok it appears automatically because they're analyzing um, the things that you like, the things that you spend more time watching and they're adapting the, the, their content that they're presenting to you to that. And now my colleague will tell you a little bit more about TikTok and Instagram for your business and how to run a successful business campaign. Thank you so much, Romina, and let's move on to my part. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you a question. How many of you are in the yachting industry? Okay, so about half. How many of you are interested in the yachting industry? <laughs> what <are> we, what <laughs> <we're saying? laughs> I'm glad about that. So just a small curiosity. Here are actually 10 Instagram accounts that uh, we have identified as the most influential at the moment. So we are presenting this to you just to have a good reference for your own account. Uh, here's a list. Um, and actually on the next slide, you will have another QR code and there you have the, the link. So if you want to take a picture of this or the next slide, feel free. What were the metrics for Which one? No, for the overall list, what is the metrics? Is it more about followers? It's about the, the, the followers, engagement, mostly about followers and also about relevance. Uh, not, not about our company, but about, uh, for example, there is Monaco Yasho official Khan Yachting Festival because we are now in the Côte d'Azur. So it's, it's a list kind of uh, based on the, um, like, how do you say it? How interesting the posts are according to our specialists, how many followers these people have, how relevant these are to, to our... Yes, because we all get from right, he's from USA. The US, yes. So the exactly. Area, but he's basically like... The biggest star, star, yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's saying any, like, wrong stuff, hidden from companies as well. 
the exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's like the yacht guy. He's the biggest uh, yachting account at the moment. He's this uh, um, male from uh, the U.S. and he's going on these yacht shows. He's uh, posting from different yachts. He's basically a yachting influencer. So definitely worth checking out his account. Uh, here again, you have the link. Go, go back to the previous slide, please. Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. So again, we will send you the slide deck afterwards to you to have. Actually, this is linking to an article that we wrote where we tell more about the accounts. Um, actually, we covered this already. Uh, the do's and the don'ts is kind of uh, similar to what Romina was saying about uh, the best practices for, for Instagram. But here we just have this uh, quick checklist if you want to, again, take a picture or just memorize, take notes. Here you have. So it's mostly about having this strong visual identity. Providing value is essential. That's it, because it's a social media. You have to kind of give to your audience something that they are going to like. Uh, in, inspiring content, beautiful content, helpful tips, uh, of course the product service that you're promoting. Okay, uh, moving on, now we talk uh, a little bit about influencer marketing. Just to recap that we are on the same page, could someone out of the audience give me the definition of influencer marketing? What comes in your mind from the word influencer? Kardashian. <laughs> Kardashian. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> what else? How would you define an influencer, a social media influencer? Kardashian. Lifestyle. Yeah, yeah lifestyle. Like, for me, it's just people showing what we just want to see. Mm, some sort of so an ideal. Future, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong on it. A, a little bit shallow. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, I well. would say it's people giving a certain perspective into their lives, usually with a USB, they have something that's if it's vegan food mm. or yachting, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And influencer marketing means that they are being paid as a form of advertisement to promote something. Exactly. exactly. And what is the benefit from a company perspective to use influencers? You get the followers, your reach gets wider. If you get, for example, a fashion star at Rani, and she wears your dress, that's about how many, 12 million mm. people who see that, that you wouldn't reach organically with your own account. Exactly, so you reach more people than, let's say you, you run a small business account and you have 500 people following, when you post you get 500 people approximately, of course, random people that you're going to appear to, but if you have someone promoting your service, being on a yacht that you own and that person has 2 million followers, you automatically reach your audience to a much wider uh, popularity. Oh. How do you get in touch with an influencer, Romina? Yes. So actually, it's very different because some influencers they have agents that are representing them. So you have to contact the agent and then the agency representing them, they're going to get back to you with information about the pricing of the post and everything very much depends on the content that you want to actually uh, promote. But yeah, the uh, other influencers, they don't have agency representing them, but um, you can just like send them a message. Most of them, they have in their bios, their email address in which like you, you can contact, you can send an email, you can explain a little bit uh, more about what you're interested in, like to share with them, for example, if you have a um, um, media kit or something like this in order for them to know what they're getting into, a little bit more about your brand, about your brand identity, the, the services or the products that you're offering. And in this way, they're going to get back to you uh, with uh, pricing and uh, availability. Yeah, so it's basically a selling process, like you have to convince, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to convince a person that what you, what your company is doing is worthy for them to be posted by them, because of course these influencers, they have two million uh, 
uh, followers and they might be a bit picky of like who they are gonna allow on their page. I think also it also depends on what kind of what are their messages putting out there because influencers do a very particular kind of marketing of who they are and if your company doesn't align with what they're standing for normally it's quite hard to tap into that's why you have different influences with different things that will be more suitable for your brand so it's kind of like looking at it and um, looking at how you can be that person can be efficient for your brand whatever it might be so it, it, it is a little bit more technical but it is doable and finding out mm. other things and, and as Romina mentioned earlier we have the concept of micro and macro Influencers, uh, sorry, micro, and micro. micro, micro, and macro, and mega. and mega, which means that not everybody needs to be this huge popular person, celebrity with two million people. Of course, you can get rather normal people who are just very relevant to your own niche in marketing, uh, who are like still interested and who are influential within their own social circle, if, even if they have, let's say, 1,000, 2,000 followers. But if these people are just the right ones, it's going to be perfect for your account. And they're also probably going to be cheaper and easier to pursue than these uh, uh, 2 million people. Uh, just here we have a few examples of how influencers can actually appear in your social media. These are real screenshots from Instagram. So we have the Yas guy here who is obviously, his whole Instagram page is dedicated to different uh, events and different yachts. And then we have uh, a local influencer from here, Anna, uh, Antonia. And it's actually a post that is posted on her own account, but she's here promoting a clothing uh, it's brand. It's a collaboration. Yeah, so it's more of a collaboration. Then we have here Louis Vuitton. It's a, a bit small, but it's uh, posted on the account of Louis Vuitton. And they have hired now an influencer to be to promote on their account instead of this uh, celebrity posting on the, their, the celebrity's own account. You see the slight difference. It's still a collaboration, but it's just a matter of where the content will be posted. Actually, it can be collaboration or a partnership, like as he mentioned. Yeah, keep going. Sorry. For I keep question. going. <laughs> okay, a bit of a, a shift. So now we are going to talk about social media video, which is especially important because TikTok is all about video and Instagram nowadays is getting more and more about video. So video, not only picture anymore, not only text, not only articles, but video is really something that is important for businesses. Also, it's close to my heart, of course, uh, as a videographer. What I love about videos is that it gives you sort of this avenue of um, combining text because you can put text on the on the screen. Yeah, you can you can have audio, a voiceover, uh, music, uh, of course the visuals because it's still like a visual thing. You have the whole storyline, so it's a combination of many things which can range from five seconds until uh, one minute and a half, ten minutes, two hours, ten hours, whatever. So it gives you unlimited possibilities and that's why I think personally that video is very important for any any business account why not personal even um, here are some numbers and figures to further uh, prove my point so actually 95% of the message retained uh, from a video of, so Sorry, it's worded a bit weirdly, but what I mean is that when you watch a video, you get 95% of the message according to this study versus only a 10% when it's just in text, which is a huge difference. And I think personally, it's because, um, again, if you're on Instagram, you're just scrolling, you're really competing for the attention of the people. And if there's a video that has this explosive sound and visuals, it's going to be something that's going to lure people in. And then another fact, we have 52% um, increase that we have seen worldwide in the consumption of online video over the past two years. And this, of course, is related also to COVID. As we saw uh, during COVID, like people were locked in to their houses, they started to use their TikToks. But it's a huge uh, rise that we now see. 
and then 86% of people would like to see more video content from brands. So in case you're running video, uh, sorry, social media accounts, it's of course essential that you have video there as well as more people would like to see it. Um, so just to get a bit uh, down to the dirty details, uh, as a video editor, here is my <laughs> arsenal of tools. So um, I don't know about you, but before I got into making videos, so about like a few years ago, I was just doing mostly photography, still photos. I did not know too much about video and I always thought it's something that's super complicated. You have to have high-end uh, programs on your computer. You run really like this high-end stuff. The truth is, yes, you will still do it for high-quality productions, of course. But in today's world, what is really nice is that you can just use your phone actually for to create pretty nice and cool videos. And actually for my job, even though uh, we do high-end videos for high-end clients, you get actually a very good quality just using applications you can use on your iPhone or your Android, whatever. Just to present here a few of my favorite tools, we have InShot, it's a video editor app. It's super simple, you just put in your clips, you crop them a bit, you can add all sorts of animations, fonts, you can make them look very nice. Again, it doesn't need, just because it's simple doesn't mean that it's not high-end. Uh, another video editor for mobile that many professionals use across the industry is VN. Then just to create your stories, if you want to liven them up a bit, you can use this one, it's called Story Art, uh, for example, but there are, of course, for each of these tools, there are many equivalents. Then you have Adobe After Effects, which is on your desktop normally. <clears throat> so with uh, After Effects, you can create these fancy animations if you see, for example, a TV advertisement where you see numbers crawling up or uh, text flying in and like the weirdest animations, it's probably done uh, maybe with Adobe After Effects. It's kind of the industry standard. Uh, moreover, from Adobe, we have Lightroom just to edit photos. Um, what is cool to me about Lightroom is that you can <coughs> put, you, you, let's say you have a photo shoot, you walk in in Monaco Yacht Show and you take 200 pictures and they are all kind of with bad lighting. You can like import all 200 pictures in Lightroom and edit them all at the same go. So for me, this is something that is useful in Lightroom. Then we have a few more photo editing. <coughs> yes, you can adjust a bit. So what you can do is that you create a preset of you want to increase the brightness by 50%, decrease the saturation, meaning how bright the color is by 50%, and then you can apply, if you wish, this to the 200 pictures. But of course, you can also select uh, to which pictures you can. And like the result would be like the same light, or depending on the first light of the feed, the first. different at the end. Yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. So it just applies the same kind of a mask to everything, but yeah. then the end result yeah, is going to so be. Mm -hmm. It's maybe less recent than some with sun or... Exactly. Yeah, it depends on the original uh, photo. So maybe better to like, select the one with all the most... I mean, the closest one. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Then, yeah. exactly. You can yeah. put them in groups. Yes. Yeah, and then you edit the pictures that have the same kind of uh, uh, lighting with the same presets. It's getting a bit technical now, but uh, I hope you find this still yeah. interesting. Yes. Because um, I'm an artist and I take pictures of my work. Yes. If I want to cut things down to a particular side to then send to be reproduced and things of that sort, which of these would you recommend? So I can just do that on my phone. That would be mm -hmm. very simple. Is the one that you would say would be the tool to use? Um, actually, for this kind of a photo editing, when you just like want to crop, uh, let's say, a lot of pictures to the same kind of a framing, is that it? Yeah, or to make them a specific size for a camera. Yes. Oh, I would say Lightroom is actually your best friend here out of these applications. It's a very simple photo editing editing tool and you can have it for free on mobile. Uh, or you can just use, if you have an iPhone, just uh, of course the editing tool that there is already. 
but uh, this one is a bit more like nicer touch, I guess. Yeah, and the okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> and one more tool, Canva, the best friend of a designer. And I guess we, Romina does a lot of our stories, for example, with Canva, because it, you can create simply uh, sort Template. of templates. And also in Canva, you can edit videos as well, which is pretty useful. Okay, let me see if we can just see a quick example. It's now 27. I hope you still have time to hang around. We are like 10 minutes uh, before the end of the presentation. This is uh, an example we have created of a uh, five second video, just to give you a, an idea of what a Reels on Instagram could look like, for example. This is from the Cannes uh, Yachting Festival a few weeks ago. And let me put the volume. Let's hope it plays somewhere. Simple. And that music Quick. Shows it's trending. Exactly. That's one of the, and that's actually the style of what is kind of trending on TikTok and Instagram at the moment. So you see five seconds, really like fast transitions of clips. For me personally, it's more about the feeling that you get. It's more about the aesthetic rather than that you actually identify in each frame what is working there. And that's also relevant, of course, for TikTok because TikTok is only about these kind of videos. And, and this is exactly the style of videos that might get you to, to a lot of following if done right. Are there any issues with usage and music? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, normally, if you use the music that you then add on Instagram or TikTok, it's all copyright free. And uh, the cool thing is that you can still use like these popular sounds, like actual soundtracks. It's not like the background music, but it's like real like songs that you hear in the radio and you don't get in trouble. However, what can be an issue is if you download, let's say, um, Someone Like You by Adele, uh, you really like the song, you want it to be in your video, you go online, you download that track, you add it to the video and you post it, then Instagram will detect that you use that sound and you can get that video deleted. Or if you keep doing that, you can get in trouble with your account. I mean, most probably your video, will, uh, your post will be deleted. So the thing is that as long as you post something, um, without the, the sound, it's fine because you can just ex explore, uh, explore, uh, export, export the sound from Instagram directly and in this way you're not going to have any problems as long as you don't post the video with the sound already in inserted. Then you're not going to have any problems. and you want to repurpose it, bring the volume straight down, try and find a similar mood of a song, and then you can post it. So you can, it yeah, other yeah, exactly. So you don't miss out on these beautiful content that you've really taken. You can make a way through that, mm -hmm. and then you won't get the legal banning or anything on that. And that's just, and you can shorten the videos and make them into multiple. As well, I was exploring using a Motown song recently in a video, and um, contacted, found the contact online, and it said six figures, and it was going to be a minute. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> we just needed one minute. And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> we have three more slides to go, and we have around 10 minutes. Actually, I think before, at least I need to rush to the okay. event. Um, Romina, can you stay until uh, after the, this uh, presentation to chat or you need to rush Just as well? Let's go to the presentation, it's fine. <laughs> A few more tips and tricks about video. Um, just to give quickly, for me as a videographer, what sometimes can happen is because 
editing a video can seem a bit tricky. It can be a bit hard to like get into it to start with it because it feels like such a such a hard task to do. What I then do is I go and I search for a reference. So reference would definitely be uh, reference is meaning that I go on Instagram or TikTok and I see what other people are doing and I get the same idea and then I'm like, okay, it's way easier to copy someone but in your own way rather than to create something completely new. Also to visualize, it's really important that when you, especially uh, when you go out, before now I go, actually I'm gonna go out and film in 15 minutes. Uh, I try to think of what could be interesting in the show, what kind of details I want to get, what I want people to say. So you really need to think a bit forward, you need to think in your mind's eye, like what could be visual. So visualizing. Second tip. Third one, very practical. When you do a lot of video editing, these files can be very big actually. They can easily like log up your phone storage, your computer storage. Uh, I'm sure if you go like one day in the uh, Monaco Yacht Show, you will get so much content that then you're like so getting lost with it. So my, tri uh, my tip and trick for that is to really organize and manage your content well. So after each shoot, I go through each video and I already clip it to shorter clips to only have the relevant ones and then I delete everything else. And I also put the relevant uh, clips to a certain folder. So just a very practical tip not to get lost with uh, the content that you produce in case some of you might be interested after this. Go for it. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. So we were asked uh, how we transfer uh, files from, let's say, phone to laptop or phone to another phone. Uh, I usually use Google Drive, just these cloud storages, or we transfer is very good as well. Yes. <laughs> yes, we transfer would be a good friend of yours. Dropbox. Dropbox. And if it's just about transferring one from one phone to another or phone to your laptop. If it's Apple, then of course you can use AirDrop. It's very uh, useful. And final tip. We are almost at the end. Final tip. Be patient, especially, of course, in all social media, in Instagram and TikTok, but especially in video, because it can be frustrating sometimes when you try to come up with an idea, a tool doesn't work, or you have created uh, something and you show it to other people and they don't approve it. Everyone has an idea of a video so you really need to be patient and respect uh, what your audience slash your client is willing to see. So be patient with uh, creation and take your time to do it. Be kind to yourself. <laughs> um, actually there was a small part that we now unfortunately don't have the time to do uh, but just to brief you the idea, nowadays on Instagram, you can actually create your own reels with this so-called template feature. Yes. That is actually that from, is template. from TikTok. And it means that you have a certain sound, a trending sound, and you can just go, it's a bit hard to explain, but you will get a grasp of it when you go, on, go out and do it. We can go around, we can come around you and show you uh, shortly. Mm. But uh, usually, like, uh, you have the option to use the template of the reel that you are watching. And in this way, you're just going to um, uh, export, like, your pictures and videos. It can be both pictures and videos in the template. And then uh, Instagram the, will create your video automatically. It takes, like, less than five minutes. You just need to know what, what sound you want to... Uh, include and like the images that you want to include or the videos and then your video is done. Yes, and I'm sure that some people here, maybe Romina or someone else will show yeah. you afterwards yes, if course. you're interested to see. And the benefits with these templates is that you can really get the syncing of your of your videos slash your pictures to the music of the of the reels. So that's uh, why templates are especially cool. Do we still have uh, burning I questions? Have Go for it. Um, my business is a consulting company in yachting. It's for the yacht mm -hmm. which is like a niche in a niche market. Oh wow! Uh, do you have any, I mean, basic uh, idea or 
tips uh, for this, like, um, I don't remember the technical word, but you know, not sharing the services, but something outside to, like, attract people, making them liking the contents, mm -hmm. but not being always, like, selling what the company does, as I don't have product. Well, services. yeah, services. Well, like, you can organize events, for example, and also, like, if something is going on in the company, like, something exciting, you can share this with your audience. If you have... Ah, for you want yes, for reels. Like mm. Well, you can, for example, if you're organizing an event, you can um, take some pictures or videos of the event while it is, it is happening, and then then you can put the, together the shots, and it is, this is gonna be like uh, the outcome at the end. And then even before the event, you can kind of create a reel uh, to um, promote the event. For example, like stay tuned or something like this, and just like to give like a preview of what they're gonna see and what to expect uh, while attending this event, for example. Like all along the year, if I can say, like generally for mm. services, do you see any... Yes, of course. Maybe, I, I have many ideas. For me, like it has been of course a process now to think what could be a video of, a, of an event or of a tip or whatever that you want to normally post as a picture or even as a text. So it's, you can be really creative with it actually uh, on how to repurpose your content from text or picture to video. But you can, for example, just do a simple uh, like slideshow kind of video. Let's say that you have 10 beautiful pictures of, of from your company's office or from an event that is coming up or even that you're organizing or even like a user manual of your service. I don't know exactly what it is, but just really think of what kind of content you already have, what pictures you have, what kind of videos you have about something interesting that is happening, something interesting for your audience. And then a video that you create can be super simple just using three images. So for example, I'm going often during the year on different events to like find new suppliers and Mm -hmm. It can be like interesting to do a, a real one. Yeah, you can like also do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also it's very important when you're attending this kind of events to uh, post stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 In post in general, yeah. In the well, it very much depends how big is gonna be the event that you're organizing and what or kind of attending. people, yeah, and what kind of people you're targeting. Right. So, if, for example, in a large, well-known hotel, you're going to have an exhibition, mm -hmm. and you're going to have music and different things going on, and you want to have people to come along. Um, how much in you, would it be six months before you start to be posting you, you how can, you generate clients, how you would... Well, usually what you can do is to announce first some, that something exciting is coming soon and that you're going to share more details a little bit later and you're going to say, for example, uh, a month or a date so people will be expecting for you to share something and they're going to be going to your page and waiting for you to post uh, about this and then you're going to reveal you can reveal like uh, little tiny details uh, uh, in the process. It depends. Like, uh, if you start organizing the event uh, from before, you can uh, you can put like a, I don't know a feed post or even a video that this is gonna happen. Then next month you're gonna post something again. Then next month again. And the closer the event is, it is, the more posts you have to do to promote the event. Actually. That's yes. No, no, not, not everything at once. Build the suspense. Not everything at once. <laughs> you have to keep them, yeah, exactly. You have to keep them um, interested. You have to keep them like uh, thinking, okay, what it can be, what should they expect? I don't know. Like, you have Visualize to keep them with the video, maybe. And, and also, like, also, another thing that you can do is to create a pool post to kind of find out what they're expecting to find in this event and they're gonna they're gonna tell you they're gonna share with you what they're expecting from this event and in this way you're gonna 
be able to adapt also to what people want to see like you're gonna see like what they would like to know what they would like to see and then you can adapt to that and they're gonna give you the ideas and you're gonna do it oh, how would you do that how, well how you, do you work how would you tell you can video? Uh, no, it doesn't have to be only on a video, it can be just like a social media post and to kind of Pictures. encourage people to uh, comment under the post. It can be also a story because now you can do a poll post, you can give them like the option to like to, to choose an answer, you can give them an option to share a comment and this can happen through a story, it can happen through a feed post, it can happen also through a video, but through a video it's a little bit different, difficult to um, make people um, give you their opinions because you're not asking them really a question. You're actually giving a preview of what is going to happen. So this is the difference between a video and a feed post in when you're talking about the event and how you're going to announce Actually, it. my take on that is that, as Romina said, you have so many ways of doing stuff on, on social media in general. Let's say you have Instagram, you can do an album post of uh, a carousel of many pictures. You can do uh, only one picture, you can do a video, you can do a story, uh, you can do an Instagram live. So there are so many options and I think the most important is that you have just one clear message that you have in your mind. Let's say like apply to this event, this event is great, I'm going to be there, something like that. That's your message that you want to carry through the campaign. And then you just uh, vary from a format to format. You use the carousel, you use the story, you use the video and you just kind of with different channels, different formats, you drive still always the same message. And that's very essential in, in social media. You yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Not to give them everything at once. Yeah, and exactly. also another thing, for example, mm, sometimes we having like we, we have the situations like a client, they are deciding now that, for example, in a month this event will happen, or like in a week. So it very much depends how much time you actually have. So you always have to adapt your strategy to that. If you have like six months then do it, like keep them guessing, keep them wonder. But then if you don't have a lot of time, you have to adapt your strategy to the timing, basically. So if you have just one week, you have to be very active. You have to give them as much as you can to post stories, to post reels, to post pictures, a lot of stress. everything. <laughs> but it's going to yes. pay off. <laughs> so it very much depends on the timing that you actually have to prepare. I yes, think. Yes, and thanks course. from my part as well. I, I really need to run very soon, but thank you at this point yes, to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs>